Well, Rick Tremonto has worked with some of the best chefs in the world and has started some of the greatest restaurants in the country. Not bad for a guy who got his start flipping burgers at a fast food joint. Rick, it's a great honor to have you here. Thank you for this having me. This is wonderful. What a wonderful day. Beautiful day. Beautiful day. A little awesome hot day. standing next to a That's grill. That's all right. We'll get, we'll but, get into it. But, you know, grilling seems to be this American tradition. Right. We like our, our I guess, our burnt sacrifices. Uh, it's, it's like, you know, a, a family tradition. You get together. It's all about friends and family. That's right. Why do, we, why do we want to do it? Why do we want to do it outside? You know, it's about the kumbaya. I like to bring my family around the table. I have three boys uh, that are teenage boys that devour food. So, you know, in Chicago, it's always, it's always <laughs> snowing. snowing with the teenage boys. That's just, right. <laughs> and it's always snowing in Chicago. So we're mm. the guys that have the grills backed up by the back door in our parkas with the hat on in the blizzard, you know, in January and February. You guys probably don't experience that no, too much here. So. You know, we grill all season. We're not just really? we're just not the summer warriors. We grill all season long. So we love to grill. It's really simple. I'd love to show you a bunch of stuff. But the uh, the spirit of the book was really about bringing family together. But who would be a friend of steak? Steak with friends. Well, we're friends of steak. But baked potato would be a friend of steak. Mushrooms would be a friend of steak. Olive oil would be a friend of steak. So it kind of had some double entendre. It had some fun with it. You know? Rick's talking about his new book. Uh, it's called Steak and Friends, yep. and it's not just about the friends that you invite over and you want to bring into your barbecue, but it's also what really goes with it and, and, and how to do it, how to cook it, how to pick it, That's right. um, and how to marinate it. Um, some people say no marinade. Some people say you got to marinate. Yeah. You're going to talk about a specific cut of meat today. I am. I'm going to talk about a hanger steak today. We're going to talk about... Where do you about, get a hanger steak? I mean, know, is this you, something you got to go to the airport no, to get? No, not at all. You know, <laughs> the skirt steaks, the hanger steaks, they used to call them the butcher's cut back right. in the day because those are the, the cuts that... The keep no, them private. That's right. A lot of flavor. This is, this is for my family. Inexpensive. All about it. I'm all about the fillets and the tenderloins, but lately, you know... I've, I've never seen one in a grocery store. I've really? I've been to the meat you've section seen, a You've lot. seen a skirt steak. I've seen a skirt okay. steak, I've seen London broil. Yep. So the hanger, if you look at a cow belly, you know, it's right next to that. I mean, it's right on that piece. And we're, what we're going to show you, can we, can we sure. go into it? What we're going to show you is we're going to show you a lot of times they'll come like this, but you'll mm -hmm. see, a lot of times you'll see them already butterflied. You'll see the skirts like this, you'll see the hangers like this. And, it, and there's I, this big piece of sinew right through the middle, and, and you got to get rid of that, We're going right? to take that right out. Because you can't eat that, you can't digest it. And you can't all. even grill it out. But you know what I'm going to tell you? you be mad at Rick if you try to eat it. you got to have a relationship with your butcher. You have to be able to say, look, I'm Rick, you know I what? shop here every week, I'm Gordon, I shop here every week. I want to know you, Joey, Billy, Bobby, Susie, and I'm, I want you to tell me what's good, what's, what's fresh. I'm a big seasonal guy. I love to go to farmer's markets. I love to talk to my vendors, my fishmongers. So whatever it is, I think you've got to have a relationship with who you're buying the product from, whether it's a farmer or how, whether it's a you, grocery how guy. How do you start that? Because you introduce for, yourself. For, for most people, you, you go say, to the supermarket, you go to that case, everything's wrapped in plastic and right. looking pristine. But there's always a and counter. You never, you there's never always see a, a counter with a guy behind it. No, most times there's always a counter with a guy behind it and you walk right up and you shake their hand and you introduce yourself or you ask for somebody is the butcher here is is somebody here that I can talk to about ordering meat or talking about what's fresh and what's seasonal mm -hmm. um, so and, and the key here is if you do this if you take this step to the, get the relationship you're now going to be getting the good stuff it's kind of like God you know you get that relationship <laughs> and and you get the good stuff we're going to get you all right I'm up. getting the good stuff we're going to get we're going to get you a towel we're going to get you a set of tongs what we've done here is we've taken this hanger. And I'm this, now Rick's apprentice. That's right. That's good. And we've marinated it in some wow. balsamic, some garlic, a little bit of olive oil, salt, and pepper. How important is the marinade? Marinade is everything. You're going to infuse flavor in there. I like to use some kind of acid, whether it's mm -hmm. balsamic vinegar, sherry vinegar, lemon, orange. Are you that does, the vinegar is going to cook it? No, that's going to break down some of that sinew that we're talking about. That's going to make this like butter. It's going to just make it just yum. I like so it by butter. You know yeah, me? yeah. We're, gonna, you know what? We're going to throw these right on. We're going to get these going. Oh, get a little flare up. Yeah, I don't you like that. Friend is, fire is your friend, as they say, you know? Here's my other thing. Are you a charcoal guy or a gas You know, guy? I'm both because I grill all season long. I, I'm not going to go make, I'm also a practical guy. I'm, I, I like to keep it real. I'm not going to go build a charcoal fire in January when I'm watching the Super Bowl. It's not going to happen. I want to <laughs> turn on my gas and make it right there, you know what I mean? So I like both. The other thing is, is I don't like that. You can actually do a combo, can't you? That's right. That's right. Is that what this is? 
No, this is all gas. This is all gas? All right. We don't want to keep flipping stuff either. We, we like to leave it. So you're not supposed to sit here and mess with it no, and move no, it around. Let it, let it cook. You're let it get let caramely. You're going to let it get across. Let it get And that yummy. way it doesn't tear Absolutely. when you try to pull it off. And while that's going, I have some broccoli rapini or broccoli rob, some people call it, um, that I've blanched in salt water. I've never Any seen that in a grocery store. Oh, come on. Any grocery store? Uh, Dominic's, Jewel, Whole Foods. I don't know what you have around Maybe here. Maybe in Wegmans. Chicago you can oh, get them. around here. You, you get I've them. never seen that. I've seen it in a restaurant, but I've never seen no, it in a grocery store. No, you blanch really? it in salt water. I grew up in, a, in an Italian family. Where does it we grow? We had it all the time. Huh? Where does it grow? It grows, it grows all over. It grows in the Midwest. It grows in the South. It's beautiful. Just blanched salt water, uh -huh. chili flake, garlic, olive oil. Blanched, we're going to throw it on the grill, and we're going to get a little smoke going on here. We're going to throw That's all this beautiful. on. You know, any kind of greens. I love to grill. Whether you're grilling, whether you're grilling rapini, whether you're grilling broccoli, um, I, I love all that. The other now, thing a lot I want of people think the grill is just for meat. What happens to a vegetable when you grill it? Oh, great flavor, great smoke. You know, uh, great uh, um, um, smokiness. You know, I mean, it just really brings it out. And when you so do, you get that char flavor yeah, working with it. Yeah, you know. It. And, and we grilled up some zucchinis during the during uh -huh. the break. You know, everybody loves that. Throw a little olive oil on there, marinate it in a little salt and pepper. Look at that. That's beautiful, huh? All right. On the steak, how long do you cook it? What well, are you trying to you do? You know, if you're gonna do if you're gonna do medium, medium rare, I like to go three or four minutes per side. Mm -hmm. But if you need to take a peek because you're not sure, take a peek, you know? Look at that. Hot grill, nice and oiled, beautiful marinade, it's not gonna stick. Mm -hmm. And you're only good. You're only gonna turn it one time. Beautiful, look at that. I want to suck a little bit because it's in between. All right. So what I have over here is I have some that are cooked uh -huh. and that I've rested because that's the other right, secret. Now, how, the other secret, the secret for me is resting. How do you, is how resting. Do you tell when it's done? That's give me, give me your hand. Put your right. hand up. Here's right. my big secret. Take your other hand. If you go right here, mm -hmm. you feel that? That's medium rare. If you go yeah. in towards the yeah. center of your palm, that's medium. medium. Medium well, well done, right there. You Not by the knuckle. Well done. Throw it away. <laughs> it's too tough to eat. Good or for not. the dog, not or for not. you. I like mine medium, medium rare. We're gonna go right back over to here. We're gonna take these right off. So that was really quick. About three I mean, minutes on three each minutes side. And, and that's uh, a fire hot done. grill. We're gonna let those rest for another four or five. We're gonna also, Gordon, I'm gonna have you take those uh, rapini. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have you just throw them right over on that uh, in that tray there. So you don't turn them, you just cook them one side. Yeah, and then just turn them as you go in. Turn them as yep, I go in. there you go. All it's right. beautiful. Oh, we're getting some char on these. Nice. This is nice. Now remember, they're already cooked. We're just heating them up, and we're just getting some smoke and some char on them. All right. Nice. So we're going to take those, put those right over here. Here's the steaks that we had All rested. Right, now, now yes. before, before you cut. Yeah, yeah. How long have they been resting? They've been resting about four, four to five minutes, and all that juice is going right back in, so when you slice it, they're just going to be succulent and juicy, and it's not going to just go all over your board. And so one of the best things to do to preserve the flavor is as soon as it comes off the grill, you put it off and you just let it sit. Just let it sit while you're making your salad, while you're making something else. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to flip our board over because we're going to cut on the surface, the clean surface, uh -huh. versus a raw surface. Yeah. So I'm just going to take these and we're just going to slice them. Nice. Now these are medium, medium well. Yeah. I'm going to grab some medium rare for us because I know you're a medium rare. I'm guy. a medium rare kind of guy. I know you are. <laughs> I know you are. It sort Look of looks that. like fajita meat. It's beautiful. Wait till you taste it. It's gorgeous. You know. So I'm going to make you forks. a plate right I mean, here. We've right got here. forks, we've got plates. I have a beautiful burrata salad here, too, that I did with roasted beets and a little bit of fresh mozzarella cheese. Now, you, your recipe says burrata. Burrata or and fresh And that's a special cheese. That's a fresh... It's a fresh mozzarella. That cow's has, milk cheese. That's right. I also have a little wild mushroom sauce here that we have, which you can use kermanis, you can use shiitakes. To give you the whole lot here, Gordon. I'm, I'm getting a full plate. I'm here. gonna hook you right up. I hope you guys at home are hungry. Because <laughs> this is really making me hungry. 
I'm getting the, I'm getting the full dish that. here. There you go, my friend. All right, you got to make one too. I'm not gonna. And then the I other don't believe thing in I eating have, alone. At the end, it's summer. We have beautiful berries, blueberries, strawberries. I have this little easy um, uh, strawberry shortcake with the, that we did with some fresh uh, fresh whipped cream and some mint, which are which is beautiful. Nice. I'm just going to dig right All right, in. now what goes into that beet salad? Well, we have roasted beets. So you've roasted uh, the, the beets in the yeah. oven or on the grill? I roasted them in the oven, oven. and I, I, I put them in foil with uh, olive oil, salt, pepper, and I roast them on salt. I put them on a bed of salt, and as I put them in the oven, all the, uh, the moisture from the beets are able to absorb in the salt. They don't burn on the bottom when, mm -hmm. you, when you roast them at about 400. Some walnuts, uh, some sherry vinegar, and some fresh olive oil and salt and pepper. And uh, beets are one of my favorite, favorite grab things. Grab these steak knives. Because the proof's always in the taste. That's right. When you and cook at home, you know, are you somebody that, uh, you know, spends the time wow. and does the marinating and does all that? Oh, I mean, wow. you're somebody that really enjoys that, correct? For me, the technique is everything. And every step has meaning. And the more you understand the steps and what it's trying to do, the marinade is trying to break down the tough fibers to make it um, an inexpensive cut tender. Uh, and how important those steps are. And it wasn't really until I got into French cooking that I understood it. Mm -hmm. And I understood the, the meaning of technique and how important even the simple things of making sure your eggs are at room temperature. Uh -huh how that influences the final dish. Absolutely. And it's just understanding the process. That for every one of these steps, there's meaning. Absolutely. All right, you go through that. I mean, I'm, I've read your books. Yeah. And, and you go through that, and you really explain from how to pick the right cut at the butcher all the way through room cooking. Room temperature, I and, love room temperature stuff. And how to grill. cook it and how to make sure you're going to get the best possible flavor for your for your family. We've got a strawberry shortcake. We got to get do. to that. You ready to dig into that? You know, it was very interesting That's when I was That's um, been calling to me. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I'm going right. to let you call to that. All Take right. your fork. That steak is wonderful. Thank you. All right, this is just a simple shortcake. Just a simple shortcake like recipe. And, and, and the recipes are, are the, the berries are very interchangeable. You know, oh, it's strawberry wow. season, use strawberries. It's, berry, right. it's blueberry season, use blueberries. They're you know? wrapping me. I'm going to continue eating. For more great <laughs> recipes, too. check out Rick Tremonto's cookbook called Steak with Friends. It's available nationwide. You can also log on to cbn.com. Every recipe you saw here today, you can get.